very pretty. <laughs> Please don't. I love you. Hey, what's going on? You're now tuned in to the PVD Horror Podcast. I'm Brandon, and today I have two special guests joining me today. They are both actors, producers, and directors. We have Leroy Coons and Crew Ennis. We're going to talk about their new film, Deliver Us, which will be available in theaters, on demand, and digital on September 29th. Guys, thanks for joining me today. Thanks for having us. Uh, no problem. So uh, I need to know, are you guys like big horror fans? If so, can you name some of your favorite films and share your first experience watching like a horror film? If you like all things horror and want to get the best horror news, interviews and reviews. Like, subscribe and ring that bell to follow us and satisfy all your horror needs. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think we both were most excited uh, about some of the films that have come out recently, like Hereditary and The Witch. Mm. And it follows like just I think reinvigorate us, got us really excited about the genre. Besides uh, some of our favorites, like we and crew, like we've watched a million times, uh, The Thing, uh, Alien, um, and then the religious horror, of course, The Exorcist, The Omen. Rosemary's uh, Baby. Yeah. Yes. Possession. Okay. Yeah, Possession. Uh, Leroy sent me Possession as a um, as a reference for character in the movie and, and like artistic expression for, you know, certain characters in the film. And that was the most disturbing horror movie today yeah. i've ever seen and that like really laid the foundation for what him and maria was as far as rehearsals and what they were trying to do they when we were we shot this during lockdown and <clears throat> lee and maria rehearsed for a month and a half in um in estonia and was able to really you know get some real power i mean i wish we had that you know for a documentary in yeah. itself it was unbelievable but yeah uh, yeah, those are some great films. Like you guys brought up, it follows. Those that was definitely one of the like the big films, and like back in two thousand and ten, that stuff that started everything to kind of change. But uh, yeah, those are some good uh, films. Um, so back in two thousand and nine, you guys created World Fair Pictures. How did this all start, and how did you guys? Have, how has the journey been over the years? Well, yeah, we met on. A, I was at USC Film School with Isaac, and I met Crew on a short film. He was acting in it. It was another director, and we hit it off. I think we went to some Mexican restaurant and we had a bunch of beers and, awesome. and then we started as a friendship. Uh, and then I decided me and Isaac dropped out of film school together to make a movie with crew. The three of us uh, was our first outing. Um, and it was a beer movie where we play brothers actually mm. <laughs> own a brewery. <laughs> so it just kind of got started for us. Nah, that's cool. Um, yeah. So you guys made it the, the, a beard tale which was a romantic comedy how has the transition been into getting into the horror genre oh wow that was so long ago it's like a different life like yeah. we, were, we were like children when we made that lee was 20 he turned 21 on set i was like like 24 i mean we yeah we were it's like different people making a different movie and after that our next film that we have in coming out it's called devil's fruit and it's more of a bridge to where we are now and um it's a uh, a revenge drama mm -hmm. and it's shot over 10 years and across 16 different countries and it's about a, a blue collar family being seduced into russian uh to russian crime and me and leroy played brothers once again in that so that was really more of a, a preparation for where we are now in deliver mm -hmm. us which is a theological horror with deep biblical uh themes that we explore and i think that's really what got us there a beer tale was just like a lot of fun you yeah. know it was best friends getting together and creating something that a lot of people enjoyed and yeah. you know, it was a great learning experience too when you say lee it was fun yeah totally <laughs> baptized baptism by fire we said you know yeah <laughs> <laughs> now you guys are really into beer too like i think lee you, you're a micro brewer Oh, yeah. If you could see my apartment right now, I don't because it's a mess and I have kids, but I have uh, 16 taps okay. of different beers, a brewery with like six fermenters. Nice. It's actually incredible. Like most microbreweries, not to be crap, they're not very good, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I, not to put anyone down, but um, 
like what Lee what what Lee brews is actually amazing. It's uh-huh. really fantastic. He started a brewery called um what's it called? Like, Beer Tail. Beer Tail Brewing <laughs> okay. Company. Beer Tail Brewing Company. <laughs> Definitely have to check that out. Uh is that down in California? Oh, it, I haven't uh done any uh what's it called? Uh contract brewing. You basically take okay. your recipe and you brew it. Uh, okay. I'm going to. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So uh, Deliver Us had its world premiere at the Popcorn Frights Film Festival back in August. What was that experience like for you guys? Would you say it was fun seeing all of us together again with Vera and Isaac and Kane? Oh. It was like, uh, it, it was it was electric. So mm. we had a packed house. We had uh, the festival really got behind us. We were the opening uh, film and we hadn't seen each other, um, all of us together since the wrap of the movie. Me and Lee and Isaac see each other very regularly, but not Vera and Kane. So it was amazing. The audience's reaction, like sitting there, because we never got to, like in finalizing the edit, we never got to sit with an audience and watch our movie. You know, yeah. we never got yeah. that opportunity because of the pandemic. So um, doing this and seeing people get scared and then feeling their response from the film and then people getting emotional and the Q and a, I was like, I was, I was walking on, you know, I was walking tall after we left there. I felt, it felt incredible to be validated like that, you know? Oh yeah. Especially since the, it was the wrong DCP. So it didn't have the right sound. And oh, color. Man. <laughs> didn't have subtitles. And so it was like a, an unfinished film, but the fact that it played well, so, played as well as it did, mm-hmm. you know? Was, that I have, I have was like to say validation like it wasn't there was like you said no the color it was like like really flat and gray and we were like oh maybe it's the projector and then the sound and there was no subtitles like what is happening somehow our dcp got um uh implemented with the wrong files because oh, of man reason. and uh and yet it still played good it was like the ultimate confidence builder yeah and i have to say the sound design on this film was amazing was that something that was important to you guys from the beginning Yes, we had like uh so so Brent Kaiser who did our um uh, our sound design has unbridled sound. He did everything everywhere all at once. He does the Daniels films. He does he's like the guy in the indie world. Everyone want, he did Honey Boy, you know. Um, so getting his hands on there. Whenever we turned the film over to him, me and Lee had a notebook, like a literal notebook. We called the sound manifesto that we turned over to him, and he was oh, like. Yeah. The, he probably just threw it out because he's so much so talented <laughs> but it, like the the sound really carries this film and helps the audience get like get in it for for the ride you know it's yeah. like but yeah now can you guys give a spoiler free synopsis of the film for our listeners all right so it's uh a nun a russian nun who uh becomes pregnant and she claims to be a virgin uh, and she says that her children talk to her. So, is, and and the two babies inside her, she can tell that one is good and one is evil. And it's based on this ancient prophecy, a Zoroastrian prophecy, that uh, when this happens, it'll bring about the end of the world. The two brothers will have a, a fight in the end. And uh, we have uh, Father Fox, who's a Jesuit priest, who's leaving the priesthood to go start a family. He goes on his last mission to investigate and see whether or not she's telling the truth. And then, you know, the madness and mayhem go on from there. Yeah. I have to say this, this was an amazing film. And um, uh, Lee, you had written the film with Kane Coons. Is that your brother? Yes, that is my little brother. Okay, cool. What inspired you guys to come up with this religious horror film? Uh, so it was my dad's idea. Uh, okay. We were in together again. And he pitched me this. He says, I, I have this idea for a movie. It's a nun. She's pregnant with twin boys. One's the Antichrist and one's the Messiah. And then right after that, I talked to my brother. I think we went to a Broncos game the next day and I was talking about it and we decided we should write it. And then six months later, we had a script for crew to read. I knew that, oh, there's something special here. It's such an original idea that you immediately think, like, oh, why didn't anyone think of this before? Mm. And then within three months from there, we were in Estonia. That's how fast it all happened. That's amazing that it kicked off so fast. So um, like that, like I said, congratulations on all that because uh, this was an amazing film. I can't wait for everyone to check it out. Um, I just want to say you guys did not waste any time kicking this film off. The pacing definitely kept me on the edge of my seat. What made you guys come in so strong with the opening scene? Questions. 
Yeah, so I was very insistent on opening with something violent and gruesome that really tried to show evil the best that we could mm -hmm. uh, and something that would disturb and then be able to kind of to carry you the seriousness of it so that we could do this slow uh, classic bill almost in a 70s style, which I don't think you could probably get away with much anymore. If you do, it's like really hard. There's also a really good book bookends of the movie, like opening the movie with the worst that humanity has to offer and then close it with the best humanity has to offer love and forgiveness and to an extent, not without giving anything away. But the opening scene when uh, Leroy, Leroy originally wrote, because it was supposed to, you know, characterize evil and like really leave an impression, like he said, and um, what he wrote, it was like, there's, how are we going to, how are we going to do this? And then um, through like, through, through those restraints, we were able to come up with an opening shot that I don't think it's really been done in cinema. If it has, I haven't seen it. And um, it's something that it's very technical and really shows even on this size of a film, you know, what we were capable of and how good our team was, you know, like Isaac, uh lisu all the estonians and andreas what they were able to bring to it in order to create that lasting image like people are that that shot and that opening scene will be copied it'll go in other movies yeah. and that's like, that was like the that was the best compliment i think we've gotten so far since people started to watch the film is yeah. is that opening and then also like the end of the movie too which that people love so i don't know yeah because that's the thing it's like for not, for today's horror it's like sometimes with the opening scene it kind of like drags out a little bit and it just doesn't hit but for this film man i just i can't like i said earlier i can't wait for everybody to see it because it's gonna it's, it definitely grabs your attention and keeps you hooked to the film and then it just the wave keeps going you know so <laughs> yeah uh the, it means a lot it means we succeeded which yeah. is the you know, gift so thank you no problem the casting in this film was well put together. Everyone did a great job. What was it like working with everyone on this project? We could yeah. talk about that for a while. Go ahead, Leroy. You start off. Then. So besides nailing down our, our big, our main actors, which was casted through auditions or offers like Thomas and Sid, who we just knew would be perfect in the role, uh, something that that just was the best is that every small character was like, a, like an accomplished or celebrated actor in Estonia because there were no other productions happening at that time because of COVID. Mm -hmm. And it just adds a little level. Like sometimes, you know, movies like one-liners just don't bring it, but every single time, like uh, you might've remembered that, uh, that opera singer, she comes in and she's the cleaning lady. And <laughs> yep. we didn't plan that. She's just like, I want to do this. And we were like, Oh my God, that is so perfect. <laughs> and then you fall in love with that character before, you know, something happens. So yeah, like, those things you can't plan. It just has other people just bring them to you and like little gifts. I think that like for us having such talented people and like, especially in our like senior actors, like Sid and Thomas who are in their completely different artists, but masters in what they do, like completely different styles of acting and what we were able to learn from them. And then Maria Vera and Yaune, Yaune plays Laura, Maria Vera plays sister Yulia. Like their crafts, they study their different techniques, but seeing, you know, they have different approaches, but seeing how well they're able, what they're able to produce with it was like, it's like tools for the future that I don't think, I don't think right now we realize how, how much of a gift and how important that is. Because, I mean, Sid and Thomas, like, especially, like, I don't think we would have been able to have near as um, competent film as we do without those two. You know, they know, you know, they're just able to get a, get a lot like we give them direction and what they were able to do with it would be a lot more than someone who didn't have all that experience. You know, it's like they were they were ahead of us in a certain like, OK, I know what you want. You don't need to talk any further. We don't have we don't have that much time. I got it. And, you know, then they produce magic. And I think that's what I, I appreciate the most about those actors is just like ultimately like what we were able to learn from them for the future. You know? yeah. yeah that's awesome and you have a veteran crew you know if everyone kind of takes a piece like you know to learn from each other so it's cool you know to see that you guys definitely learn something to kind of carry on to your next films so um 
I read that you guys wanted to engage viewers on multiple levels to not just frighten, but provide a thought provoking experience. I have to say you guys did just that. Lots of people were very impressed with this film and also compare it to films such as The Omen, Rosemary's Baby and The Shining. That's pretty big. How does that make you guys feel? It's the best, you know, possible thing we could hear. Yeah. <laughs> we get lots of discussions about that. It's like we're going to do a horror film. We want to do something that it puts good into the world, not bad. And again, there's so many of those horror films that do just that. And uh, yeah. Right. I agree. I think that um, what we're able to do and having Leroy, you know, play Father Fox, like he was uh, initially, like you said, um, like hesitant to it. We made offers to other actors and then I would sabotage along the way because um, he's a perfect embodiment of that character. So strong and so likable and you you just root for him and um when i was talking about the other actors a minute ago and i didn't even mention him because like to me he is the film you know he wrote it and what we created together and he was like the ultimate conduit for what for what the story and how it needed to be told and his approach to acting based on all these other movies like i said uh uh earlier with possession and then we were talking about the shining and the shining and what you know jack's character and how how uh how he didn't it was like jack was jack the whole time and the movie revolved around him father fox actually has this arc where he you know kind of gets in that similar rhythm as jack from the shining and um i don't know that was such an amazing thing to watch you know, like to be a part of and then to because you know you watch all these classic films that were being uh compared to and then able to to have our idea of something and then be able to create it is like, I don't know. It's a drug. It's yeah. like all we, it's all we can. I mean, I'm, I'm some screw. I don't know if you can cuss on this podcast. Yeah. You can cuss. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm fucked. Like this is it. Like, this is all I want to do, you know? And I just want to work with people I respect like Leroy. And I want to do what the people that came before us did. You know, I want to make things that really capture this moment in time that really like, this is where art is right now. This is a film and how, you know, society or how we view ourselves. And this is what we're putting out into the world. And you know, what we did with Deliver Us, I think is it's interesting. You know, it's unique. It's a fun, like deep and like thoughtful ride. And to do it with people you care about, is you know, it's a gift. Sorry to go on a tangent right there. I just oh no, it. definitely that's that's great because you know you always want to hear good feedback. You know, when, like just just working with someone, it, you you hear, you know, just good things about yourself or in just the team that you have and you put together. It's an experience, and so, like I said, I I've watched this film twice, so I plan on watching it again. I plan on going to the theaters uh, to check yeah. it out. So get a few friends, let the, uh, my whole community know. So this is definitely a great job. And I just want to tell you guys that. So, um, but can you guys give the listeners, uh, some like where they can find you online or plug some of your upcoming projects that you have? We're hoping to make a sequel and mm, okay. a third movie that all goes well. Uh, we might be making a Inuit horror film next, which is again, another religious horror, but through Inuit mythology. And, uh, yeah, you can find me online, just my name uh, on uh, Instagram. And I have a TikTok now. Okay. I have, <laughs> he's Leroy Coons. And you can find me. I'm uh crew underscore Enos on um Instagram, but I'm the only crew there out there, I think. But um one thing Leroy didn't mention is we have another film coming out. Um probably oh. by the end of the year. It's called Devil's Fruit. And okay. it um it's like uh I, I mentioned it earlier, but it's uh, our version, it's like boyhood, but okay. but a revenge drama. It shot over uh, 10 to 12 years, same actors. You see them as bent boys become men. And the um, story, I mean, Leroy, could he wrote it. He can tell it a lot better than I can. Um, I don't know. It's going to be a good one. It's going to be a really good one. So everyone, make sure you check out Deliver Us, which will be available in theaters on demand and digital on September 29th. Uh, thanks for everyone for tuning in. And thanks, guys, for taking the time to talk to me about your film. Really appreciate it. And like I said, I'll be in the theaters checking it out. So, cool. thanks, Brandon. Uh, no problem, guys.